I'm really giddy today, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I've just had a couple of mental days and it's just, it's affecting my brain. <laughs> Hello, welcome to episode 39 of that Raw Raw and Kids podcast. My name is Kelly, also known as Raw Raw and Kids, and you can find me on Instagram and YouTube. This is a knitting and designing podcast from the northeast of England. Welcome, welcome back if you are returning. Thank you so much for joining me again, and welcome to anybody new here. I think I've got it right for once. I think. Anyway, um, today I have a small child with me. Um, basically, Rowan, my uh, seven-year-old, has come down with a sickness bug and is currently, he's upstairs playing on the computer. Um, I did ask him if he wanted to come and help me. He said, what are you recording the video about? I said, I'm just going to tell people about what I've been knitting and stuff. And he went, well, I can't see how I can help you with that. So, so he's not helping me, <laughs> but he might pop down and interrupt. So, um, just yeah, be aware. And if you hear any background noise as well, just be aware. Um, yeah, uh, it has been a funny old week. So, last week the kids were off school, and now this week they went back on Monday, and. Uh, and then, yeah, yesterday afternoon, just around about dinner time, 12, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, um, I got a phone call from Rowan's school telling me that he was throwing up and uh, vomiting and um, I needed to come and collect him. And the way schools in the UK work is if, if your child vomits or has diarrhea, they are not allowed back in the school for 48 hours, just in case it's a bug, to obviously reduce the spread of stomach bugs um, and so I went and collected him he was actually still vomiting when I collected him um, they gave me part of his he has like a hoodie for his uniform one of his uniform for a part of his uniform <laughs> is a hoodie they gave me that in a carrier bag because it was covered in sick and um, brought him home and he was fine and then he told me that couldn't stop his poo being runny or something like that he said to me I can't properly remember the words he said but he basically um, ruined two pair of pajama bottoms and was rummaging around for the third um, and then the rest of the day was actually fine he was eating fine and he was he seemed okay and then <laughs> this morning I woke up to him crying saying he was standing at the side of my bed saying I can't stop doing it I can't stop doing it and I was saying what and he said about his poo being runny and he'd ruined another two pair of trousers before I'd even got out of bed. It was 7am. And, uh, yeah. And then he's been back to bed and he's had a good sleep. So now he's up um, playing the computer. So we just have to see how things go. But yes, it's a lovely start to the video. <laughs> but this is what I'm dealing with today. Yesterday I had the absolute day from hell. Um, I will tell you all about it later, but let's do some knitting stuff, I think. So I have two finished objects this week. One of them you know about, one of them is like, surprise. <laughs> um, so the first one I'll show you is the one you know about, and that is the String of Heart Socks by Kat of Dexter Loves Annie. And there's these. Doo -doo. So, so they are this lovely um, twisted stitch, like one stitch cable, two stitch cable, whatever you want to call it, um, pattern. It's quite simple and it's just an eight row pattern, or eight round. And it makes like, see if I can twist my arm, it makes these little love hearts. See them? It's really cute. And then she did an eye of partridge heel and they're just little shorties. 
really cute. Um, you could extend that if you wanted to. It's just she's wrote it so that you just do um, a couple of pattern repeats. But you could do them longer. There's no nothing stopping you. And it only has a little cuff as well, which I kind of like. It's kind of cute. But you could also extend that if you wanted to as well. Um, I knitted them in uh, Beehive Yarns. Audrey base, which is her sock base. Um, it was a one of a kind colourway called Canopy. It's absolutely gorgeous, and I have loads left. Uh, yeah, I've got a big old chunk left. I haven't actually weighed it. I should do that, shouldn't I? Um, I'll wait. So I've got forty six and a half grams left. So I could really do another pair of socks, at least shorty socks. Um, with that or do socks with a um, contrasting heel toe and cuff. So yeah, loads left and they're super cute. I was testing it on these um, and the pattern was released uh, Saturday the... Oh, you're testing my brain. Third? Saturday the 3rd of June, I think. It was the day after my storm seeker top come out. So yeah, Saturday the 3rd of June, um, it was released. It's Kat's first ever pattern. And um, yeah, they're really cute. So if you like the look of those, today I'm drinking my usual biscuit brew tea. Right, my other, <laughs> oh, I am wearing my moon glade top, which um, is a design by me. Um, you've seen it before. And if you haven't, this is the moon glade top. Um, my other finished object. <laughs> my, I'm, I'm really sorry if I'm really scatterbrained because honestly, like you don't, you, you don't even want to know what's going on in my house right now. It's just nuts. I have birthdays and vet visits and illnesses and just, anyway. My other finished object, <laughs> moving on, is um, one you know nothing at all about. Basically, I have um, been commissioned to do some designs for an online shop called The Wool Box. I will drop links below. Um, the Wool Box is a reasonably new online wool shop. Uh, it sells accessories and everything like that. It's like a wool warehouse or a Lovecrafts or whatever like that. It's it's one of those, but it's a reasonably new one. Um, and they are getting d different designers to design patterns in their yarn or in yarn that they sell. Um, and then they're like, they, they'll sell the patterns from their website and things like that. And the patterns are exclusive to Woolbox. So um, you can't get the patterns anywhere else. Now, there's a couple that I've been asked to do. There's a couple of socks and there's a hat and a cowl. I haven't knitted a hat and a cowl for ages. Um, but the hat and the cowl, as long as I've got this correct, um, they will be, you won't get both. You would get one or the other. I don't know whether they swap it out after so long and change it to the other one. I don't know how it works exactly. But when you buy from the wool box, you get a free pattern. And the hat and the cowl that I've designed are for that. They're going to be free patterns when you buy something from the wool box. So I have knitted the cowl. Now, it is it was blocking and it's still a little bit wet. So I will show you it. Um, but yeah, it's not in the best in the best state. I'll show you it again when it's drier. So, it's a long, I can't put it on because it's, it's damp, but it's a long double wrap cowl, you get me? <laughs> and it's got this pretty pattern on it, hang on. So, yeah, um, it is knitted in. I don't think I've got... Hang on, it's going to be crinkly. Right, it is knitted in. Um, wool box Imagine Classic. Which is anti-pulling DK. This is the red 
Red Rioja colourway. And it's like a deep wine colour because it's Rioja. Um, it is 100% acrylic. Am I writing that before I go on? It doesn't say. Yes, it does. It's there. 100% anti pilling acrylic. It's a different pattern band it is the softest acrylic i've ever used um uh yeah it is it is just it's just so soft it just i don't know i i would never if someone gave me that and said do you try this i would not think it was acrylic at all honestly i'm not just saying that i don't really like acrylic i've said this before i try and i've got a bag falling over I try to stay away from acrylic because I don't I don't like that feel. It hurts my hands because of the plastic, but this is insane. It is really soft, really nice acrylic. So that's the Red Rioja colourway. Um and yeah, this is I think it's Entwine it's called. If they keep that name, that's what I called it. But yeah, so there you go. So I've, I've done that and I'm going to put it back down because it's still quite soggy. Um, it was hanging outside but I've brought it in to show you it's on my contraption. So that is my, <laughs> sorry, that is my finished objects. Thank you very much. <laughs> right, now, uh, things I've been working on. So whips that's what they're called aren't they whips so i have been doing a little more on these um these are my new sock design there so carla from so knit create repeat if you don't watch her what are you doing with your life? Um, she said it reminds her of books in a library. And I thought that was perfect. And she said that um, there's a name that librarians use. I'm going to get this wrong now. Athenium. Hang on. Bear with me. Athen Ath Athenaeum 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 I think Athenaeum Now I'm at home and editing I think it's Athenaeum I think It is spelled like this I can't, I can't show you everything Do you see that? Oh That's how it's spelled That's where I brought the pattern Because that's why I can't show you Um. Yes. Uh, Athenaeum. That is a term to do with libraries. I can't remember what she said. I'm so rubbish. <laughs> Hang on, what does it mean? It was really good. And I was like, yeah, can I use that? She said, I think you should call them this. And I was like, yeah. Uh, Athenaeum meaning. Used in names of libraries or institutions for literary or scientific study. So, the Boston Athenaeum. Used in titles of periodicals concerned with literature, science and art. A London club founded... Yeah, it's not the club. Um, but yes, it's just... It's used in the names of libraries or institutions for literary or scientific study. So, it is um, basically a posh word for library. And I think that is absolutely perfect. Like, that's exactly the type of thing that I would look for. So they are the Athenium socks. If I can ever remember how to pronounce it, I'm going to be struggling every time, aren't I? It's the um, the library socks. That'd be what I'd be calling them. But yes, it'll go in. It'll go in eventually. Um, I have stopped at the heel flap of this one because I remembered that I had to do a little jiggle for the instep to line up right um, and I couldn't remember what I did 
and I was out. So I stopped there so that I didn't make a mistake and um, I need to sort that out. Um, the other thing I've been working on, you not yesterday, today is two, no it's not. Today is Thursday the 8th of June. <laughs> it's my dad's birthday. Happy birthday dad, he doesn't watch this. He put it on once and thought it was boring, <laughs> turned it off. He shouldn't talk about knitting. Um, so yeah, you won't be watching. But it's my dad's 71st birthday. Um, you will hate me for telling you that. He, um, anyway, it's not nothing to do with my dad's birthday. Two days before my dad's birthday is my partner's birthday, Terry. I'm really giddy today, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think I've just had a couple of mental days and it's just, it's affecting my brain. <laughs> um, right, where was I? So, Dad's birthday today, which means two days before my Dad's birthday, is Terry's birthday, who is my partner. His birthday is the 6th of June. Um, I had nothing for him for his birthday. We've been really skint, broke, whatever you want to call it. We've had no money. Um, after Rowan's birthday we kind of just broke ourselves and we needed to just kind of replenish it slowly um, and so and he's really hard to buy for because he just he plays his hobbies is playing his computer which he does a lot he plays a lot of computer games he has over a thousand games he buys everything he wants himself when it comes out so like he doesn't want for any games and he just he's just really hard to buy for when you ask him he's like i don't want anything like i don't need anything i don't want anything so he's hard he's hard work and uh so we're sitting there on when did i do it uh saturday night so it's birthday on tuesday and on saturday night i was like i could knit him a pair of socks but it's saturday <laughs> So I cast on some socks and I was like, if I can get one done, then I can just IOU him the second one. Like, at least he sees the sock and knows what he's getting. Um, I should have thought of it before, but I just hadn't. Um, so I cast on one sock and I managed to cast it off on the Monday night and literally did an inch on the Saturday by the time I thought of the idea, went to bed. And then on the Sunday, I worked for a good like four or five hours on this sock and then on the Monday I worked for another good four or five hours to finish this sock. Got, I was sitting knitting it in front of him. He just, he has no idea. He just, he sees me knitting all the time. He never asks me what anything is. So I knew I could get away with that. Anyway, this is the sock. <laughs> it's a bit bright. Um, it's just two by two rib. I didn't follow a pattern. I just cast on. He's 64 stitch. Um, he's a 64 stitcher. So uh, last the last pair I did was a 2.25 millimeter needle, um, and it was just a vanilla sock. Um, so this time, oh, there's a big cobweb up there. I've just noticed. Oh, that means it's a spider somewhere. <laughs> not filling me with joy um yes oh my god i'm so sorry <laughs> this is your first time here i do apologize <laughs> just what's going on this, honestly this is just tea i swear so the last sock i did in was 64 stitches <sighs> come on brain and it was vanilla on a 2.25 millimeter needle which is a us two Oh, I can't remember. I'll pop it on the screen. I'll pop it down there or whatever. These are on 2.5 because I kind of just wanted to make them go a bit faster. Um, so I did a 2x2 two two rib, 64 stitch. He's tried them on. It fits. I tried it on. It fits. So yes, the story of the sock. I did the heel that I've discovered I can do from Athenium, which is 2x2 two two slip stitch heel. Secrets. I don't know if it focused, it's very orange. Um, yeah, and then I cast the one on last night and did that during um, the Knit and Natter song lucky group. So they are going to be odd, but he likes that. He doesn't care. I didn't re-jiggle re 
the yarn to make it the same. So they're only that much different though. Well, about that much difference, whatever. So yeah, I've got that much done of the second one. They're on my prims, which if you remember I showed you um, my new needles. I'm still loving them. Um, I did last night accidentally bend the car. The camera's moved. I do apologise. It stopped recording and um, I didn't know where it stopped. So I had to like, I had to see. I had to have a look and see what had happened. And I also got interrupted by a little one. So yes, I was saying that I did bend the cord. I was trying to pull it through a loop and it kind of, it did get bent like that and it's it stayed very, very slightly bent. Some, but that was my fault, I'm a bit annoyed at myself. Um, someone asked me if uh, the cord has any memory and it doesn't. It's really, a really nice cord and honestly, like considering they're plastic, um, I don't feel like I'm knitting with plastic needles. They're really nice. I really do recommend them. So far, so far, so far. This is only the second. I knitted those on on them. I knitted both of those on um, these, and now I've knitted all of this and this. And so far, I'm impressed. So yeah, there we go. I am using. Um, Hobie's Silly Sock yarn. Um, those of you who are long-term viewers will remember this from a while ago. Um, I had a few uh, balls of this from Hobie. Uh, I still have a couple left. I cannot remember the colour name of this one. It's something graffiti, but I can't remember what it is. But I will pop that on the screen for you. Um, I just love it. It, it's called silly socks and they're just they just are they're just amazing like if you like that sort of thing and terry really does i do too um and i'm gonna do a pair for rowan in this and probably in the other yarn i have um and then i have one that's like a pinky color so i need to knit some for myself um in that but yeah so that was the other thing i was working on and then finally the one more thing I've been working on is my ranunculus, but I've hit a snag. So I think I've sorted the snag, but it's been an annoying snag. What happened was, so I was knitting this on a knit night. So the way ranunculus works, for those of you who haven't knitted it before, I'm assuming there is not many of you, but I'm also assuming there is some people. There is some people who haven't knitted it before because um, because I hadn't. This is my first time, so there must be some people out there who haven't knitted it yet. Anyway, the way it works is you do. Um, where's the back? There's the back. Right. So you do the neck, you do the short rows, you do the pattern, and all of that is like a kind of York type way of increasing. But once you get to the end of the pattern, it's a it's a bit of a raglan. Um, and you have the increases like like this type of increase. Um, so I had worked it. I'd done so many, and then I went on a knit night um, on my Discord, um, and we were chatting. We were all chatting, and I was doing the raglan, and then I couldn't remember what row I'd done the raglan on, and when I hadn't, and and I started to get into a bit of a you know when you get in your own head and you're like, I can't remember what I've done. I started doing that. So I put it down because I was like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so I put it down. I didn't pick it up for a while. Like it must have been at least a week because um, I was doing the cowl. I was doing cherry sock. Um, yeah, I just didn't pick it up. And then when I did go back to it and I had to look to see what I'd done with the raglan, I actually hadn't made a mistake. Um, it was just the first, the one where I thought, oh, I've made a mistake here. That was the only part I'd made a mistake on. I just needed to tink back. But because it was knit night, it was just a bit too much for my brain to take it. Um, so I tinked that bit back and started again. But because I'd left it for a while, I don't, 
it's it in the pattern it says you knit to marker and then you do like a knit front and back sort of thing or does it say one stitch before marker i can't remember it possibly says one stitch before marker but the way they look i don't know whether you'll be able to see oh you might do so can you see this So there's, there's the marker in the middle, right? And there's like two stitches. Well, it's not, it's like four. Four stitches. And then you can see the increases coming out, yeah? I hope you can see that. But when I start, I can see them all lined up perfect there. When I started again, I couldn't get them to line up here. They just looked like too far over. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? So I pulled it out. Just those those four four rounds. So then I changed it and did the stitch in a different <coughs> place. Knitted four rounds and then I could see they weren't lined up. We were on Knit and Netter last night on the Sonwaki, it's called, on our knit group that we all... It's like a knit night where we chat on our Discord. Um, Like a live knit group. And I was on there... And I picked it up and I looked at it and I was like, they're not lining up again. It's going to have to be pulled out again. So I didn't, I ended up knitting on my silly sock instead of, um, instead of working on it. But then this morning I've had a little look while Caden was getting ready for school. And I realised, I realised what I was doing wrong then. So I've pulled it out again and I've, I've knitted those couple of rounds again. And now I've got it lining up. So basically, I can't remember where I was when I last showed you this, but it wasn't too much bigger. Um, I haven't done any work on it because I've worked and then pulled it out, worked on it and pulled it out. So yeah, yeah, I'm almost at the sleeve separation. Almost. But not quite. Um, I have this much yarn left. My series looking a bit phallic. <laughs> We'll do this um yeah i have this much yarn left which is a fair amount um but then i've got two two extra two balls one of this one of this as well um oh that's all coming apart i don't want you to do that it's not what we want is it Um, yeah, that's better. So I've got two balls. I want to try and do like at least sleeves to here. I want to try because um, this is going to be warm. I'm not. It's not going to be a summer top. So I'm hoping I can get some sort of sleevage going on. But we'll have to see. I think what I might do is separate for the sleeves and then I might do the sleeves and then and then do the body. I don't know because I don't really like cropped either. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll have to wait and see. But yes, that is my ranunculus. It is... Um, it's going all right. It's just, you know, it's not something that you can do when you're not really concentrating um, on when you're putting increases in. It's not a difficult top. It's just that I wasn't concentrating at all. Um, and that is it for the stuff that I've been working on. Um, I do have some acquisitions. So Lovecrafts had an insane sale on the Yarn Collective's Fleurville four ply the other week. They've got a big sale on for a lot of different things. This is not sponsored by Lovecrafts or anything. I wish it was, if you fancy sponsoring me is a shout um it it just basically the storm seeker tea which was out last friday thank you so much if you bought the pattern that is the biggest selling pattern i've ever had it was crazy um yeah thank you amazing um i hope you all enjoy it those of you who bought it so yeah, Storm Seeker Tea came out. That is in the, the Yarn Collective's Fleurville Four Ply in the Brunier colourway. Someone messaged me, Zena. I think she watches the podcast. If she does, hello, Zena. 
Um, Zena messaged me and said, "Oh, the yarn that your tea is knitted in is on sale at the minute." And I knew it was. It's normally sixteen, fifteen ninety nine a skein. I knew it was down to ten to nine ninety nine a skein, which is what I paid when I bought it for the Stormseeker tea. Um, I knew it was down to that again because I'd thought, "Ooh," and then I was like, "No, you can't at the minute." Um, but then when I, I said to her, I said to Zena, "Oh yeah, no, I've seen it. It's on sale," and I just thought, "I'll oh, just have a little look again," you know, as you do. And I clicked on it, and it was down to four pound eighty a skein, which is insane. I will try and put a couple of um, price conversions up for what that is, because honestly, four pound eighty for a skein of yarn that's normally fifteen ninety nine is crackers. So. I was like, I can't, I cannot walk away from that. I can't walk away from that. So I ended up buying six skeins for thirty pounds. Um, I did need to get some. I got some tapestry needles just to kick it over the edge. But yeah, I got six skeins because that's crazy. So I've got two teas worth to make two new teas that I'm going to design something with. I've already got an idea for one. The other one I'm not sure yet, but this is what I got. So I got, I have noticed with the Iron Collective Fleurville, for those of you who went for this deal, you definitely need to alternate your skeins. Um, because I have noticed before that the colour, the colours are not exact every time. Just saying. Anyway, um, I got three of these, so three... Oh, doesn't that look beautiful? Oh, isn't it lush? That is the spruce colourway. Like, oh my god. And I think I know what I'm going to do with that one. I have a design up here. Needs to come out. And then I got... Oh, I got these. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, This is... Is it delphinium? I want to say delphinium. Yes, this is the delphinium colourway. But it, it's just beautiful. So yeah, I got those. And I am a happy chappy. Um, and my other acquisition was actually a gift from lovely Kat at Dexter Loves Annie. She has reopened her Etsy shop after a hiatus. Um, and... She is making, the, I've got a hair or something ticking in my nose, I'm sorry. She, I'm really spotty as well, I'm, I do apologise. Not that, like, I should apologise for being spotty, it's not my fault. But I, I yeah, it's not nice. Anyway, Kat. <laughs> she, um, she's making um, little bags and things in her Etsy shop. And these are so cool. So she's gave me this. So it's a little, it's got a lovely little zip look. A gorgeous stamp. And uh, yeah, little like notions bag or sock bag. Would I fit a sock in there? Probably would, you know. So I love that. And then she sent me this, which is amazing. <laughs> Knitting is my jam, which is a gorgeous drawstring, kind of like a backpack type. I could put my PE kit in it. It's quite stiff because it's new. But you know, I could go on my travels, do to do with my knitting is my jam bag. How amazing is that? And she sent me those because she's just a divine human being. Um, so thank you very much, Kat. And I will link her. No, 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 no. I will link her Etsy shop below so you can have a look because she does a couple of others as well. And um, yeah, she's lovely. So those are my acquisitions. So I will finish up by telling you about my day from hell. If you are interested in hearing about my day from hell. Um, those in Discord have already heard about it, 
so I apologise for the repetitiveness. But um, basically, yesterday I got up, sorted the kids for school, took Rowan to school, Caden catches a bus up the road, um, off they went. I went off to Slimming World, that went well, I lost a pound and a half, um, surprisingly, <laughs> I didn't expect to. I went and did the food shop, which I hate, I hate food shopping, but I went and did that. And then I got home and I, want, I really wanted an egg mayonnaise, a, yeah, an egg mayonnaise sandwich. I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's me mixing the mayonnaise into the egg. <laughs> I wanted an egg mayonnaise sandwich for my, my dinner, my lunch. So two eggs in the pan, set them off to boil. And, and then my phone rang and it was K Rowan's, not Cadence, Rowan's school. So I answered the phone and the secretary, she rang me and she said, Rowan's being sick. She said, we need you to come and collect him. And the bearer of bad news because he obviously now has to stay off for 48 hours. And I was like, oh, okay, I will come and get him. So I headed up to school straight away. I turned the hob off, but I left the egg in the hot water. Eggs, two eggs. I went to the school. It's usually pretty quick when you go and kick, pick up your kid because they've been ill. They're usually just sitting in the lobby waiting. Um, I got to school and it was nursery kicking out time. So I was waiting a little bit. They then said, oh, he's actually still vomiting. Come to the toilets and like get him from there. So I went through to, through the school, went to the toilet, <laughs> got him and he was okay. There was a teacher with him and everything. Um, said we'll see you on Monday and we left. We came back home. Rowan said he felt okay and he just went to do his own thing. I went in the kitchen and I thought that egg must be cooked now because it's been sat in the hot water even though the pan wasn't on. So I cracked the egg and when I opened it up it was still slightly jelly around the yolk in the middle and I was like Bleh. so I don't know why probably menopause brain I don't I don't know why but I thought I'll just finish them off in the microwave so I put them in the microwave for one minute and I turned my back on them and went to the sink and I was doing something in the sink and I just heard kaboom <laughs> like it was like it was like World War Three was going off. I was like, oh, and it just immediately dawned on me what I'd done. And they, the microwave was still going, so I ran back to the microwave, switched it off. One egg was okay. The other one had exploded so definitively that there was the tiniest bit of shell left and the rest had just obliterated in globs around the microwave. <laughs> So I was like, oh my God. So I took the egg out that was okay, ended up making that into mayonnaise, uh, egg mayonnaise and cooking a, another egg. In the meantime, Rowan's telling me that his poo won't stop running and he's got two dirty pair of pants up there. Plus his sick covered uniform that we'd got him out of. So I threw those in the washing machine and then needed to get, my dog was at the vet um, just for a booster jab, I needed to get her out the door to the vet. Um, my dog weighs 40 kilograms, um, that's heavy. <laughs> I'll translate it into pounds, I'm not sure what it is in pounds because the, the vets just weigh them in kilograms. She's really heavy, I cannot lift her off the ground. Um, and my car is just a normal car and she doesn't like going in cars so she will not get in the car herself. You have to physically lift her. So my mother-in-law, her husband is disabled so they have like a wheelchair accessible car. Like it's just a long like van type thing. So I'd like rung her and said can you can you help me get the dog to the vet? So she's like yeah. So she come round, she only lives like five minutes up the road, like five minutes walk up the road. Um, she come over and uh, we dragged the dog into the back of the car and I sat in the back with her. Um, but when she gets like excited or agitated, she chews on a lead and she just has like one of those extendable leads, you know, with a button. So it's 
it's made of cloth, it's not like a rope or anything. <laughs> she was chewing it, chewing it. I was like, stop chewing your lead, stop chewing your lead. And then I got her into the vet and while I was trying to get a, like trying to tell the receptionist that we were here, I looked at her lead and it was literally hanging on by a thread and the room was full of dogs. So I like quickly like put a big knot in her lead so it wasn't gonna snap. Managed that, got a scene in the vet, everything was fine. Get to back home. Terry said, I've, he, he'd said to me he was gonna clean out the microwave um, because he realized I'd had a bad day so far. Uh, and then he said, the microwave's broken. <laughs> I don't think it was because of the egg. I think it was just like the final nail for the microwave. It, it was, it's old anyway. So the microwave's now dead as a doornail. That's finished. Um, so I was like, oh my God, this day, this day, like it just keeps getting better. Anyway, on the night time, everything settled down then. Rowan kind of settled, his stomach settled and everything else and everything kind of settled down. And then I had um, knit night with my Discord gang and that was fun and nice. But the night before I'd hardly had any sleep, so I was really tired and I was like, I'm gonna have to go. So I left a little bit earlier than I would normally go. Um, headed off to bed. I can hear little feet. Hello. Come and say hello to everybody. Come on. You can't see anyone. It's just me. Look, say hello. Well, that's a horrible face. Don't be daft. Do you want anything to eat? Yeah, sure. That's what you come down for. Okay, what do you want? You don't know. Well, I'm nearly finished. Can you give me like 10 minutes and then we'll decide what to eat? Not even 10 minutes. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. So you're making dad with another sock or? Yeah. Is that how much we've done? Yeah. This same sock that you've given for? No, that's how much I've done on the second one. So good. I know, I'm amazing. All right, go on then. You seem really poorly. <gasps> Anyway, so we had knit and that was nice. And then I headed to bed quite early. I had changed the sheets in the day, so I had a nice clean bed. I climbed in, it was lovely. I laid myself down. The dog jumped up, as she does most nights, and I heard her do a burp. And I just knew the way she was stood. And I, I said, get down, get down now. And she didn't, and she threw up all over the bottom of the bed. So there was nothing wrong with her. She just, someone was saying to me in Discord, well, is she all right? Yes, she's just a pain in the bum. <laughs> she just got herself very excited for some bizarre reason. Whenever she eats, she thinks she's going out for a walk, even though most of the time we take her out for a walk before she eats. But she just, I don't know, she's got it in her head that she eats and then she goes out for a walk. So even when she's been out for a walk, as soon as she eats, she thinks she's going for a walk again and she gets all wound up. She's not, there's not much up there. There really isn't. Like, she's, she's not very bright, bless her. And yeah, she's got herself really wound up and I think seeing me get into bed made her realise that this, this walk is not happening. It's like half past 10 at night, I ain't going out. And, um, and so she threw up all over my bed. But, um, yeah. And then this morning I woke up to Rowan standing at my bedside crying, saying I can't stop doing it. And he had pooed his pants again. And that was what I could smell the minute I opened my eyes. So, you know, it's not been the greatest of days. <laughs> I'm all right, though. I am. I am all right. It's one of them things, isn't it? You have little kids, this is, this is the sort of stuff that you deal with. Exploding eggs is probably something you deal with due to stupidity of brain cells yeah so that is me i'm gonna leave you with that hanging in the air um <laughs> i hope your day is better than mine i mean. <laughs> have a lovely rest of your day and i will see you in episode oh episode 40 will be next and do you know what else i currently have 1999 subscribers which means 
Episode 40 could also be 2K. I'm not holding my breath because my numbers fluctuate like my waistline. It's like crazy. But, um, and I'm not surprised when I'm like this. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm going because I'm just in, in a weird, weird mood. Um, yeah, bye. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs> My peace.